back here with more Radio Free Decipher. I'm now sitting with Sharon Baxa, who plays Mara Jade for us. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. You're here for uh, all weekend here at San Diego. Yep, You've been doing a lot of cons recently, actually. Uh, Actually, I think I've done all the cons recently. Wow. Yeah. Okay, how are you liking that? You see a lot of strange stuff on the road, I'd imagine. It's been a lot of fun, but I think that uh, after all of the ones that I have under my belt now... I'm liking the smaller ones a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, the big ones are just, it's, it's crazy. There's just so much to see. Too much to take in. Wow. But you do get to meet a lot of the other actors from the movies and other places like that at the larger shows, right? I sure do. Who have you had a chance to meet? Let's see, the last person I met was at Dragon Con. I worked with uh, David Prowse and Jerome Blake. Jerome Blake, of course, from episode one, right. plays all sorts um, of characters. It plays, like, I think it was seven different characters. Um, <laughs> both really great guys. I've met Jeremy Bullock, worked with him a few times. All sorts of neat people. Um, a lot of people that I don't get to sit and work with, I kind of, you know, meet, hi, that sort of thing, trade autographs in passing, which is really cool. Uh-huh. Who's your favorite, I have to ask? My favorite star that I've met so far? Yeah. It has to be Jeremy Bullock. Yeah? Yeah. He's a good guy. He's a lot of fun. He's the kind of guy that you want to get stuck working with for eight hours. Uh-huh. You also get to meet a lot of people out on the road besides the celebrities with interesting stories to tell you, fans that come up to you. Any stick out in your mind? I think my favorite story is uh, about the San Antonio fan club. I got to meet them. They, they got together as a whole fan club and came to see me in Plano, Texas for one of Ben Stevens' shows. And uh, I guess I was the heroine in this one little girl's life. And when she got to meet me and talk to me and spend a few minutes with me, I just made such an impression on her that she remembered it for a long... I mean, just couldn't stop talking about it. Unfortunately, the little girl got pneumonia and passed away. And her sister and brother and part of the fan club came to see me at my next Texas convention, which was in Austin, and told me this story and said that, that they just they were so grateful, so thankful that I'd spent the time with her and made such an impression on her because she talked about it up until she died. Wow. I mean, and it was just, it was so neat for her to meet the person that she read about in the books and in the comic books. And I guess by taking that kind of time with her, you know, I, I made it come to life for her. So when she powerful. was in the hospital, it, you know, it gave her a little comfort. Did you have any idea when you got started with all of this that that kind of experience was in store for you? No. No, not at all. Not at all. But then again, you know, people seem to take to unusual things sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never know who's, who, I guess, is going to be put in the position of a hero or a heroine to a child. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess that's what I try to do, too, when I meet the younger people. I mean, I try to think, well, how would I want that person to be to my daughter? Right. And I try to emulate that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the crowd that you meet here, of course, is mostly male crowd, right. young men, but a lot of fans are women. They are. I've met the Star Wars chick, um, which is a <laughs> club. Uh, Mari Jade has her own female fan club. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. Um, there was another really big one. Oh, Sequential Tarts, that's what it was. A bunch of girls. Uh -huh. My first piece of fan mail was from a young girl. You save a lot of your best fan mail. You were showing me your scrapbook yep. earlier. Yep, I do. I saved my first piece, of course, because I still look at it and can't believe it. I save the best pieces because they remind me that what I'm doing is a good thing, yeah. you know, that I, I should be on my best behavior, and I should spend 15 minutes with each person because it, it really means a lot to some people. I mean, That's you never know. That's a great attitude to have about it all. Well, I think it's the only one. And, again, I, I try and act like I would want somebody to act to my daughter. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Mara Jade will be back. There were other uh, photos taken uh, during the original photo shoot for the Emperor's Hand card. Right. So we will be seeing you on a future Decipher card. Yes. And uh, around at other shows, I understand that you'll be going to Gen Con as sure well. I am. Okay. Yep. So fans out there of Mara J can look forward to meeting Shannon if they attend Gen Con. We'll also be seeing you at DecipherCon, yep, I would imagine. DecipherCon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for taking some time out today to sit down with us. No, thank you very much. Now we're here. I have the privilege of sitting down with Will Wheaton, who Hello. fans of Star Trek will know as Wesley Crusher. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Sure. I understand uh, you've been off the convention circuit for a while. Is that true? I have been. I haven't done a convention in over five years. I haven't even really done a personal appearance in, in over five years. I've done a couple of things, mostly charity 
mm-hmm. and sorts of things. Um, but a lot of people have been pursuing me, asking me to come do like autograph shows and that sort of thing. And I'd never really done that. And it's a world that I've never really been exposed to. And a friend of mine, that's just what he does. He sells autographs. And he said, I, I want you to come back east. And I said, look, man, I'm not going to fly all the way back east if this isn't something I'm going to have a good time doing. Uh-huh. And he said, well, look, I'll hook you up with the guys at San Diego. It's three hours from your house by train. Right. And you'll, and you'll go do it. And you'll have fun. And then you'll come out to New Jersey, right? And uh, I said, all right. So I got myself hooked up here. I, I talked to the people from the Comic-Con. They were so cool. Uh-huh. And g- they gave me a table, and they gave me a pass, and here I am. I'm so, having a blast. Okay. So I'm having been... so much fun. Glad you were able to make it. So tell me about your experiences uh, since Star Trek. What have you been up to? Well, I took a lot of time off. After I left Star Trek, I went back and lived in the Midwest, and I worked for a computer company uh, uh-huh. making uh, video editing software for the computer, and I did that for two years. Programming? Uh, uh, I did a lot of beta testing, and mm-hmm. then I, I also went out, you know, to, I did trade shows for them, and, uh, you know, I, I did a lot of uh, sort of kind of like design work, you know, I would sort of suggest things and like, you know, that that sort of thing. So I was, I was part of the team that sort of brought, you know, one of the one of the software versions to the market and I was very very proud of that. Uh-huh. But after uh, after about 2 years, I just started started waking up every day feeling like something was missing, something was wrong, something was misfiring in my life and what what it really came down to was that I missed being an actor and I came home sold my place out there and I, I, I packed up and I came home and I went straight into school and went straight into acting school. It's like a drama academy that I'd never done. You know, I've been a professional actor since right. I was seven. I never had done any sort of formal education or any training. I didn't really have any technique. So I went and took that for another two years, like two and a half years, uh-huh. and then went and did some scene study. Did a little bit here and a little bit there, but I kind of felt like if I were to leave my training in the middle you know, it would be like Luke Skywalker in Empire Strikes Back, you know, like I might be able to go and do some cool, you know, Jedi tricks, but I'd never realize my full potential. So you stuck with it. So I stuck with it, yeah. And then, you know, I went and I saw my, my father in the tree and uh, uh-huh. I was back working again. And now? And uh, now I have, uh, I got married in November. Congratulations. My, thank you very much. My wife and I have been together uh, for a little over four years mm-hmm. and uh, she has two children from a previous marriage. And uh, I'm their, their full-time stepfather. And I tell you, to be quite honest with you, being a husband and a stepfather has become my primary priority. That's, that's my the number one thing in my life. And I still love acting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, it's what I do to sort of, you know, earn the, earn the money to pay the mortgage sure. and, and, and all of that. I've been doing a lot of theater, a lot of improv, a lot of uh, sketch comedy. And, Would you uh, say you prefer comedy over more dramatic and you serious know, material? I, I can honestly say that I absolutely love them both for completely different reasons. They're completely different. You Do know, you find one you easier right than the it. other? Um, well... I'm a little more comfortable with drama just because I've done it all my life, and I really do think that I'm an accomplished dramatic actor. And what I'm coming up against now is a lot of people think, well, Will's not funny. You know, we can't have him do comedy and stuff. And, you know, I, I did I did a, a sketch show last night, and I brought down the house and you know, in my monologue, and I absolutely killed in one of my scenes. All right. Um, and so what we're doing now is we're sort of my team, which is my agents and my manager and I, are, are going around Hollywood and just sort of re-educating people, letting them know that I've got these comedic skills and... You know, I I know what, all those guys from whose line is it anyway. I know all those guys. Yeah. You know, and I you know I, I improvise with guys of their caliber all the time. Excellent. Yeah, and and it's really a lot of fun. Of course. And and, and uh, it, it's really really useful for uh, commercials and stuff, which uh-huh. is not very helpful now because Screen Actors Guild is on strike against the commercial right. advertisers. Uh, I've and you know that's actually given me some free time. I'm very very active in the 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 strike and uh, I'm very active at the union. I'm on a number of committees. I'm running for the national board in the fall. Uh-huh. Uh, so I can you know make a difference, make things better for actors. Sounds like a very full plate. I've had an extremely full plate, and I've actually taken some things off recently mm-hmm. just because I had so much that I wasn't able to do my best work in everything that I did and everything started to suffer. So I started to right. pull back until I was able to sort of recharge and get going again. A lot of theater in that repertoire. Do you prefer that over, say, film and television? Well, the thing about theater is that um, it doesn't pay you anything. You actually right. have to pay them. <laughs> yes. So um, what I like to do is is work as much as I can in television and movies, um, you know, to, to make enough money to, to feed my family and survive for the year and then do theater as an avenue to really do a lot of acting, which is what I absolutely love to do. Would you say it's the immediacy of the audience response? I tell you what it is. I tell you what it is. It's the fact that there is absolutely no safety net. 
yeah. at all. It's you and the audience. And there's no second take. Absolutely not. And it is acting in its purest form. You are completely on your own. You are totally 100% on your own uh, when you are uh, on stage. Mm -hmm. There's nobody there to catch you if you fall. And that's scary, but it's also wonderful right. and very, very rewarding. And it, what happens is it translates this focus and, and this dedication into my television and motion picture work mm -hmm. because I know what it's like to, to die on stage, <laughs> you know? So, so I, I make sure that when I have an, a chance to do an extra take that we don't need to do an extra take because, you know, I consider myself really an actor now, a, 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 a well-rounded actor, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I have rounded out my skills in, in everything, you know, the drama and comedy and classical theater and, you know, you know all sorts of poetry and prose and all that. But you stuff. find theater the most satisfying. I really do. I mean, it's really fun. And what's nice is that theater is built for actors. It is an mm -hmm. actor's medium. You know, your director's there to sort of guide you. Um, but then after your first couple of performances, the director's gone, and it's just right. you and the other actors, you know? And, and that's that's all you're doing is it's just showing up every performance. And, and, and my mantra that I say to the... I gather the cast before every performance, and I, you know, we sort of hold hands, and, and, and I say, we do it for each other, and we do it for ourselves. Forget the audience, forget the director, forget the producers. We're here for us now. And we just sort of repeat it over and over again, and then we go out and have a great show. That's excellent. And the uh, show that you're working on right now? Uh, every Saturday night, I do a show called the Jake E. Fenn Stratton Show. It's a late-night comedy talk show in a theater. Mm -hmm. Same format as David Letterman or The Tonight Show. We do it at the Acme Comedy Theater in uh, uh, Hollywood, and uh, we have uh, amazing celebrity guests. We've had uh, people like Steve Allen, John Cryer, uh, uh, Shelley Long. We've had some really amazing guests. Uh, uh, Great. This, this Saturday night, um, our guest is Ted Longe from The Love Boat. Yeah. You might know him as Isaac, like, yes. hey, you know. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not going to get to be there because I'm going to be down here. But so far this season, we've had Alexander Paul, Brett Butler. We're going to have Julie Brown. Um, we have amazing, amazing, amazing comedians, mm -hmm. phenomenal comedians, like the top flight comedians in Los Angeles come to our show. And the reason a lot of celebrities are drawn to our show is we have a 99-seat theater, mm -hmm. and they can come in, they can talk about whatever they want, they can plug whatever they want, they can play a character if they want. When Shelley Long was on the show, she wasn't Shelley Long. She was, like, workshopping a character. And because it's a 99-seat theater, the, the guests are willing and, and prepared to say things and tell stories that they would never tell on TV Excellent. all the time. They still say to Keith, you know, I would never say this on national television, but, and it's so much fun. And if people are interested in coming to see the show, you can go to www.jkeith.net, mm -hmm. and there's all the information about the show. You buy your tickets online. You can win free tickets. I do a different segment than the show every season. This season, I'm doing a segment where uh, we call it Will's Soapbox. Uh -huh. And uh, I come out in a soapbox and I stand on and kind of rant about things. And I'm currently ranting about the strike. Uh -huh. um, and then I also sort of play a character who uh, we call me, Will Wheaton, <laughs> big time Hollywood celebrity. You know, and I kind of make fun of, of people, of name actors who are more name Right. Uh, no, I have to ask, you've had time off, and has that helped distance you from Star Trek? Or yes. does it? Yes, absolutely it has. Yeah. Um, I am older and wiser. I turn 28 next week, and uh -huh. I've mellowed out considerably since, you know, when I was a, a brash young, you know, teenager, an early 20-year-old something. Uh, you know, and, and I often regret that I, I didn't keep my mouth shut more, you know, uh, than, yeah? than, I, than I did. Yeah, you know, I probably... I probably should have just shut up a lot in the past, but, you know, hey, look, when you're 18 and you know everything, you know, sure. what are you going to do? Uh, being away from it has really given me an opportunity to look back on it and reconnect with all the things that I loved about it and all the things that mm -hmm. make it so wonderful. Uh, the amazing actors, the fact that we're part of something that is ubiquitous, you know, yeah. um, to be part of, you know, sort of like, <laughs> you become sort of iconoclastic, you uh -huh. know? Um, just to be part of that is really, really phenomenal, and I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate what I had, and I couldn't appreciate it at the time because I was a teenager. I didn't, you know, right. teenagers don't appreciate anything. That's part of being a teenager, you know. You know everything, and you don't appreciate anything. So nobody has anything to tell you. It's a value. Yeah, yeah it's really, like, what could they possibly know <laughs> that could help me out? Honestly, yeah. you know, just because they were teenagers and now they're like my parents. I don't, my parents are idiots. They have no idea, <laughs> you know. Yeah, being away from it has absolutely helped me to to appreciate it. And because I, I am really, there are a number of things that I'm very, very geeky about. Mm -hmm. I role play, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, hardcore. Play the Star Trek game. Oh, yeah? I mean, yeah, I mean, I People uh, were uh, dying played, to know that. Played, played, the, played the Star Wars game. Uh -huh. You know, I actually taught the kids across the street at my old house how to play the Star Wars game. They were like, hey, we understand that you like do all these dorky things. Can you do this game? And I was like, yeah, come here. 
<laughs> Let Uncle Willie show you a thing or two. Come on. Yeah, Will Wheaton, humanitarian. Uh, so anyway, I, I, I'm really geeky about these things. The Prisoners, Star Wars, Monty Python, you know, science fiction, uh, all of that stuff. I, I'm absolute anime. I'm crazy for it all. So now to, I can see why you've been having a good time today. Yeah, oh, totally. Um, so, so actually, to, to come to something like this, I know what it's like to stand on the other side of the table. Right. I know how I feel when some celebrity is more interested in like just pumping through the line, and I'm like, but I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciated what you did. And they're like, yeah, great, go. You know? Uh -huh. um, so I think I just have a different perspective, and I, I, I so appreciate the fans. And now, don't get me wrong, there are still some people who take it a little too seriously. Right. There's still some people that I really don't, don't want to be stuck in an elevator with for a long time. But overall... I've just really found a way to appreciate, you know, w what I've got, and and I understand as a fan of the X Files and Millennium and and the practice and shows like this that as fans of a show, when I was on Star Trek, the fans would be like, you know, well you have to do this because we're the fans, and we, you know, hey, you know what, we're doing it our way. And then what I, now that I am a fan of shows, what I realize is that you actually do kind of to a certain extent have to do things for them because. You really like it, and you come to expect certain things. Right. You come to expect certain things from, from, from the writers, and you expect certain things from the actors, and when they don't live up to your expectations, you're gone. Mm -hmm. You know, forget it. I turn it off, and I'm mad. Yes. You know? So I can totally dig where the Star Trek fans are coming from when they're like, you know, you kind of got to do it this way, and you kind of got to do it that way. Now, where I draw the line is with the whole Kill Wesley thing. Like, you know, like, <laughs> all, all, all you people can go, like, take a leap, you know? But, how, how does but, it feel? You have all this positive feedback on one side, people to absolutely love you and your character, and then on the other side, to have this huge hate Wesley coalition. Well, the vast majority of the hate Wesley coalition were, um, you know, 45-year-old men who live with their mom. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of easy to write them off. Seriously, though. <laughs> Tip your waitress. She's working hard for you. I'm here till Sunday. Thank you very much. You know, you can play Kino from your tables, and at 7 o'clock, Don Dinkins takes over in the TikTok room. Okay. <laughs> When I was, uh, uh, you know, going through all of that, it was really hard because, as I mentioned before, I'm a geek. I love these things, mm -hmm. you know, and it, I consider myself part of the geek community, and I'm right. proud of it. To be part of a community and have people hate something that I did that contributed to that community so much was really painful for me. Right. And I really didn't like it. And it was very hard, and I got angry about it, and I took it personally, and then I realized, you know, I'm telling all these people to separate my character from myself. Well, I need to separate myself from the criticism. And once I got that, you know, then I achieved nirvana. And so here again is, is a way in which having the time to distance yourself from it has helped. Yeah, yes, Great. very much. All right. Well, I really want to thank you for taking time to sit down with us and talk. Oh, man, this is great. I'm having such a great time here. This is really fun. I'm Excellent. glad. Well, enjoy the rest of the weekend then. Thank you very much. Back with more Radio Free Decipher from San Diego. I now have the privilege of sitting here with Jerome Blake from the Episode 1 Phantom Menace movie. How are you doing today? I'm extremely well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you've you? been having a good time on the first day? Very good. My first time in San Diego, so that's fantastic. What um, are your impressions? I made a point of getting out. In my lunch break, I, I sprinted over to Coronado and had a look at that hotel. I don't know if you're familiar with it. but I'm not. It's the uh, hotel that was used in the film Some Like It Hot. Oh, with okay. With Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon and Marilyn Monroe. And uh, ever since I was very, very young, that's one of my favorite movies. So I had to make a pilgrimage over there. Of course. Today to go and have a look at the place. And it's quite fantastic. Apart from the fact that it's right next door to a naval air station. So every two minutes you get some kind of fighter bomber coming in and disturbing <laughs> the beach uh, activities. But it's still a beautiful building. Fantastic. Otherwise, it lived up to your expectations. It did indeed, yes. And, and in fact, I'm going to try and come back and stay there instead of uh, wherever it is I'm staying now. <laughs> <laughs> now, in The Phantom Menace, you played probably more parts than I think most fans realize. Yes. Seven. Seven parts. Yes. And they were? Okay. In descending order of screen time and therefore <laughs> importance. Uh, Rune Harko, Trade Federation Attorney. Mm -hmm. Masamida, the Vice Chancellor of the Galactic Senate. Oberon Cesis, a Jedi counselor. And then three senators, mm -hmm. one called Ornfri Tar, one called Graxel Kelvin, and one called Horrocks Ryder, and then one senator's assistant. Mm -hmm. and, and it I'm doesn't have a name, unfortunately. And I am sure that uh, fans out there are going to want to know how you got a gig like that. Very simply, mm -hmm. I, I worked on a film called Fifth Element some years ago, and Nick Dudman, who ran the creature effects department on Fifth Element, phoned me up about a year after we'd done that film and um, I thought he was just phoning up to have a chat and so how are you doing kind of thing and 
uh, that he told me that he was working on the new Star Wars picture. So I was saying, well, good luck, you know, excellent yeah. work kind of thing. And then uh, just matter-of-factly dropped into the conversation, um, would you like to be in it? And, and uh, did that take a long time to consider? That took the entire duration of about 10 nanoseconds <laughs> for me to consider. <laughs> um, and, of course, I said no. And the rest is history. Well, and then he, then he sent over a truckload of used bills and, and sweet talked me into it. So. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Fifth Element, so that means you're no stranger to prosthetic work. Well, I'm not a stranger pr to prosthetic work, but not because of Fifth Element. Fifth, the, the Fifth Element character was um, involved being inside 140 pounds of aluminium and fiberglass costume. Oh. That wasn't, uh, in the strictest sense, a prosthetic job. Mm -hmm. um, I had done other things before for the BBC in Britain, um, again, playing various kinds of aliens. Right. Um, so, you know, I was, by this time, I was well used to the idea of having body casts done and head casts. And, mm -hmm. and I suppose, more importantly, grasping the notion that if, you, if you're hired to play one of these kind of characters, what, what you have to bring to it is some kind of um, personality so it doesn't just look like a guy in a rubber head something that around. will read through the makeup yeah and and that involves being aware of um, the principle of like physical acting mm -hmm. and in the case of Rune Harco because it was um, the facial movements were animatronic and it was all done in real time uh, and not CG'd afterwards as some people have seemed to have thought right. so that that character for example had to be a marriage of all of those disciplines and so it was like a team effort putting that character together and in fact I was just talking to Will Wheaton about this um, you know from the opposition Star mm -hmm. Trek you know you're not supposed to talk to those people <laughs> <laughs> and he was saying the same thing that I felt when I saw you know he said it, it really had a good presence and a very natural look to it it didn't look like a man with a right. costume on and I was very pleased with that, uh, not only to hear him say that, but I was very pleased to, to see it when we first we saw the movie, that it did actually read very successfully, whereas, you know, in, and particularly in some of the older movies, some of them some are of so the blatantly obvious, yeah. a guy with a rubber mask on, you know, and, and moving like a human being. And, of course, that doesn't do the job. The you know. types of movements you're talking about is mostly theatrical type of material. Is that your background more than film? It's... It's where uh, obviously I did theatre before I did film. Although the first professional job I did uh, was in front of a camera, but that w that was uh, something far less um, illustrious uh -huh. than Star Wars. It was it was actually for a karaoke video. Oh my! For the Japanese company Pioneer. And on rare occasions when I find myself in a karaoke bar, I look down the list to see if that song is on there, and. Thus far, I haven't seen it yet, <laughs> you know, or not, not recently, I mean. Um, and it's very confusing for me because there is another version of the same song, but with a different karaoke video, because that's very popular in Japan. And uh, so there are several versions flying about, but I'm yet to see my version. Oh, my. You know, now, now that I'm a seasoned actor, I'm sure I can look at my work. Objectively. Of course. Oh, God, no. Just, Always. Just look at it. No, oh, just, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've been doing a lot of the shows this summer. Yep. Uh, Shannon, in fact, was here earlier and spoke very highly of you. Well, um, I met her at the Dragon Con event in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and uh, we were sitting on the same signing table with Jeremy Bullock, who played Boba Fett, and... Another Richard, person she spoke highly of. Richard Le Pomontier, who played uh, Admiral Motti mm -hmm. from the original movie. Who, uh, For those who don't know, he's the uh, the guy that stands up to Vader and then gets throttled. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, going back to your question about Shannon, yes, we had, we had a, a very, very enjoyable weekend, and, uh, and I know she's very excited about being, you know, brought into the fold of, uh, you know, the Star Wars mm -hmm. convention world, you know, it's just, before, in fact, before we made Phantom Menace, the publicity department at Lucasfilm made a point of taking me to one side and, and pointing out to me that if I took this role in this movie, you know, uh, people would find out who I was, even though it's completely costumed, and blah, 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 which they, is fine, you know, they forewarned me, but I, what they didn't forewarn me about was this huge kind of subculture of the convention circuit that exists. Uh, I mean, I knew that this kind of thing went on, but I had no idea of the scale of it. Was it quite a shock to you then? It was a very pleasant one, yeah. because, uh, you know, the, 
the enthusiasm and the passion that, that people have for these things mm -hmm. is quite extraordinary, you know. So it, it, I, I'm not aware of having seen it anywhere else. And maybe it, maybe at a big kind of uh, sports event or something. Right. It's that level of intensity for these people. It's, it's quite amazing to, to see. I have to ask, of all the characters from the movie, which was your favorite? Do you have one? Well, I suppose Rune Harko, because he's the, the main character that I play, mm -hmm. therefore he's you know, the one I have to thank most for, I suppose. But one of the other ones, uh, one of the senators I had to play, um, Ornfrey Tarr, who's, um, in fact, your company makes a gaming card with him on. He's the big blue yes. guy with pendulous jowls and big ears. <laughs> and when they uh, asked me if I could uh, do this character, they, you know, showed me a picture of, or a sketch of the thing, and it's like, yeah, sure, okay, I think I can manage that. And then, <laughs> and that's it. And it was four and a half hours of makeup, and as it's going on, you know, I was actually asleep sporadically because it took so long. Sure. But gradually, as you see the bits going on, you start to, in your mind, you start to put the characterization together and what have you. So he ends up in this huge guy, and the, and the costume, <laughs> under, you know, below the, all this prosthetic is twice as wide. And the, the final shot from um, the direction was, all right. Here you go, we're going to give you this Twilight girl. So they give me a girl covered in nothing but body paint and, and a bit of chain mail. <laughs> Sit her down on my lap and said, uh, right, we'd like you to play this guy like a lascivious businessman. Do you think you can do that? And I was like, mm, I think so. I, I think I, I don't think feel think the that, moment. I don't think it's going to present too much difficulty for me. You know? <laughs> now, as I understand it, another favorite character of yours, though not Star Wars, is Dr. Evil. It could be true. <laughs> I was just I was just checking to see if Mike Myers was in the building. Dare, dare I say you looked the part a little bit? <laughs> no, it, I have to say there are, one, there are one or two films that I've seen through my life that have you know struck a chord and stayed with me for a uh -huh. long time, and and in fact Austin Powers was one of them. You know, and yes, you're absolutely right. The, I thought Doctor Evil character was absolutely fantastic, and uh, I. I even took it upon myself to send Mike an, uh, an email a while back, uh, offering my services that if he was going to play, uh, <laughs> if he was going to do a third Austin Powers thing, then maybe, maybe he should have um, another henchman, but this one called Maxi Me. Well, then who knows? Perhaps he can cross over and be in more than one of our games. <laughs> who knows? Yeah. Well, thank you, Jerome, for taking the time to sit down with us. It's I been hope my you pleasure. Enjoyed, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you very much. Bye bye.